Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a quiz review for the second online quiz of Chapter 1 for the course Lifespan Development, and the chapter is What is Lifespan Development? Hopefully you've already taken this quiz on Canvas, and so you've seen the questions, have some idea what the answers are. I'm just going to go through uh, what the correct answers are and explain a little bit about what is and is not the answer to each one. The first question is a child is exhibiting anxious behaviors and the therapist works to reconcile internal conflicts within the child based on early experiences with parents in order to develop more adaptive behaviors. I challenge you to diagram that sentence. What is the theory the therapist is working with? So the um, therapist is looking at internal conflicts based on early experiences with parents. The choices are A, maturation, B, psychosexual development, C, psychosocial development, or D, behaviorism. Well, in this case, because we're working with internal conflicts based on early experiences with parents, we're talking about B, psychosexual development. That is code word for Freud. Um, Freud had a lot to say about development taking place in the first five to eight years of life. And that conflict was a very significant element of this, especially as it contributed to uh, anxiety and other uh, really emotional disorders. Now, maturation is a, you know, is a topic that talks about, but not really a therapy uh, per se. Psychosocial development, mean, psychosocial development means Eric Erickson, Freud's student, who had, a, in fact, an entire lifespan theory of development. And we're going to be talking about his stuff all through the course. Uh, behaviorism is an important theory. It is very effective in many situations, but it's not going to talk about um, internal conflicts because behavior, behaviorism focuses on behavior, not internal conflicts. All right, the second question. A theory that sees children as developing through distinct periods of life is called A, a cognitive theory, B, a social theory, C, a psychosexual theory, or D, a stage theory. Okay. So we're looking at distinct periods of life, and that is going to mean D, a stage theory. Um, a stage theory means that you have this episode, and as soon as that gets resolved, then you have this episode, then you have this one after that. And there are several stage theories. And truthfully, um, the psychosexual theory is an example of a stage theory, as is the psychosocial, as is uh, a lot of Piaget's work on cognitive development. But the stage theory is the general category for these things, where he says you have this first stage, then you go to a second stage, and so on. Um, now, cognitive theory uh, is an important thing. Cognitive has to do with thinking, and, we're gonna, and cognitive theories have to do with, say, that, for instance, disorders or development has to do with changes in the way that a person thinks. Those are important, as are social theories. Uh, psychosexual, again, means Freud. Um, we'll talk about each of those, but in terms of just distinct periods of life, that's going to be a stage theory. Question number three. Adele allowed her baby to nurse until she was two years old. That's rather old by nursing standards. At five years old, Adele's child refused to give up sucking his thumb. Adele's mother read about Freudian psychology and learned that the thumb sucking was due to problems during which stage of development? Well, to the extent that you're going to uh, subscribe to this particular theory of development, your choices are A, the genital stage in uh, Freudian psychosexual development, or B, the phallic stage, or C, the latency stage, or D, the oral stage. These are, um, you know, major choices in um, Freud's development. Um, well, this one having to do with uh, breastfeeding and thumb sucking is going to almost always have to do with D, the oral stage. Uh, the idea here is that there was an oral fixation that developed earlier, and when the child was weaned, um, it replaced it as a way by sucking its thumb as a sort of a substitute for the mother's breast, and uh, the idea of care and nurturing that goes with it. Anyhow, that's the general theory. That's, that's the idea. Um, you know, the sad thing is I really wish people didn't get too fixed on uh, Freud's theory here. There's a lot to say about Freud that is, in fact, absolutely supported by recent research. This is this part of the theory is not necessarily one of them. Um, genital, phallic, and latency stages are all part of Freudian theory, but we'll talk more about those and the things that they uh, contribute to. Question number four. Tara moved from the country to the city and is learning to adjust to the faster pace. 
she has started to learn how to navigate the different streets. Which Piaget concept is Tara utilizing? Now we're referring to the Swiss uh, developmentalist Jean Piaget here. We spent a lot of time talking about cognitive development. The choices here are A, assimilation, or B, adaptation, or C, accommodation, or D, equilibration. Now these are all Piagetian concepts. And um, the one we're looking at in particular here where she is learning how to work in a new environment and navigate in a different system, that's gonna be B, adaptation. Assimilation and accommodation have more to do with how you incorporate information into existing categories. You either force them into existing categories, that's assimilation, or you change your mental categories to fit the new information, that's accommodation. Equilibration um, has more to do with how you resolve sort of the cognitive conflicts, but we're not gonna deal with that right now. Uh, we're looking at particularly here is adaptation. She, uh, Tara is adapting to the new circumstances. Okay, question number five. Which of the following is one criticism of Piaget? Now, Jean Piaget is a giant in developmental psychology, and a lot of people have uh, tried to establish themselves by throwing rocks at Piaget. Uh, maybe it's A, many cognitive skills develop in distinct stages, or B, Piaget may have overestimated the ages when children are capable of certain tasks, or C, Piaget may have ignored proper ages for certain tasks, or D, many cognitive skills develop gradually. Well, Piaget is best known as a stage theorist, that he talks about you have this stage in development and then a clean jump to this stage in development. And so if you're gonna criticize Piaget, probably the one that's gonna carry the most weight is the idea that many cognitive skills, D, develop gradually. That it's not always the uh, plateau followed by a big jump followed by a plateau that is associated with stage theories. On the other hand, it also can be a real oversimplification of, of Piaget to say, well, we have gradual progression, therefore he is wrong. I, I don't want to get into that. But if you want to get this particular question right on the quiz, is D, that many cognitive skills develop gradually, and that doesn't fit exactly with the way Piaget is commonly understood. All right, question number six. Which of the following areas would be concerned with how instinctive survival occurs? Okay, instinctive survival. And our choices are A, ecology, or B, ethology, or D, physiology, or D, biology. Well, these are all legitimate terms. And the one we're looking for right here is B, ethology. That has to do um, with this really this, uh, well, it's instinct. It's, it's having to do with this development through natural processes within an environment. Um, ecology has a lot more to do with uh, the situation you find yourself in now. E ecology these days, we of course think about like green leaves and recycling and stuff, but it, it can refer to like, you know, living in the city streets, that's your e ecological niche sort of. Physiology has to do with, you know, um, you know, how your bones are connected, where your brain's situated, and biology, of course, is a very general topic. But we're specifically looking at ethology and the ethologists. Okay, number seven. Which of the following would be of most interest to a biological theorist? The choices are A, a child's interaction with parents, B, a child's cultural background, C, a child's genetic makeup, or D, a child's education. Well, in terms of what a biological theorist or a biologically oriented developmentalist would look at, the most likely answer is C, a child's genetic makeup, because that's a thing that is distinctive about a biological approach. Interaction with parents is important. That's going to be, for instance, uh, social learning, or you know, it could even be psychosexual or psychosocial development. Cultural backgrounds can uh, you know, have more to do with ecology, child's education. This can be more cognitive. But a child's genetic makeup is going to be distinctive, uh, particularly of interest to be a biological theorist. Now, just to show you that I randomly selected these questions from a very large pool of questions, and uh, we're doing it randomly, question number eight looks an awful lot like question seven. Question eight says, which of the following would be of interest to biological theorists as opposed to a biological theorist? But we have very different uh, choices here. Language development, A. Social development, 
personality development or cultural development? Well, of these four things, the, the kind of development that a biological theorist would be most likely to address is language development, that's A, because language is gonna be a very heavily cognitive skill, very influenced by the structure and functioning of the brain. Um, social and personality and cultural development are all very important, but they are more abstract concepts and a step away, a uh, step further away from what a biological theorist is gonna be dealing with. So language is a, is a likely uh, area of interest for a biological theorist. Question number nine. Matt created a study that looked at how children adjust to divorce at the ages of three, five, seven, nine, eleven, 11, and 13. Which type of research is this? Well, you know what, You're, they're leaving out a little piece, an important piece of information on this, and that is, it's the same kids at three, five, seven, nine, you know, that he's conducting this research over a 10 year period. Um, so your choices are it's correlational or B experimental or C observational or D longitudinal. Well, because he's using the same kids and looking them at, at them every two years for 10 years, this is a longitudinal study. That means, you know, across time. Uh, correlational, you, you means you need correlations. And so that could be, for instance, like a survey um, or archival data. Experimental is manip manipulated study where they're looking at the effect of your independent variable, your manipulated independent variable and dependent variable. Uh, observational study, you know, that could be correlational. And actually, this is a kind of observational study, probably. Uh, but longitudinal is, is a distinctive kind where you're looking at the same groups of people across time. And that's what Matt's doing right here in this study. All right, last question in this quiz, number 10. Which of the following is required from each participant in a research study? A, a release of liability during the study, B, consent to participate in the study, C, obedience during the study, or D, commitment for the entire study. Well, this is a question about research ethics, and the one thing that uh, institutional review boards and other uh, research ethicists will be looking at in particular here is B, consent to, to, to participate in the study. And that's an important thing. It's also just a polite thing. If you're gonna have people to participate in your study, you need to have their permission. They need to be there voluntarily or else you're actually going to get, if you coerce people, you tend to get very different data and often very bad data. Um, now, release of liability, that might be a nice thing if you're going to be poking people with sharp sticks. Um, obedience during the study, that actually, that's just a, a, a reference to the uh, Stanley Milgram's obedience studies during the 50s and 60s and commitment for the entire study. Not many people do that um, because participation is almost always voluntary. Um, and, you know, so the one thing that you require from each participant is consent, uh, informed consent. They need to know what they're getting into. And with that, we have finished the second quiz for Chapter 1, what is, lifespan, what is Lifespan Development in the course Lifespan Development. Thanks for uh, watching, and I'll see you for Chapter 2.